What's good, YouTube? DM Gaming here. Hope everybody had a great night. Guys, today I want to revisit some things that could possibly hint at the future of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot and basically showing that they are potentially setting the groundwork for Dragon Ball Super to appear in the game. So, without further ado, guys, let's roll the ad from Eniba. Like I said, guys, go check them out. They're an online marketplace that sells games, gift cards, uh, PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live, and use promo code DM Gaming for that extra percent off. Let's go. All right, guys, so some things that we pointed out in the last video um, for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot or in the past videos, whenever we broke down the skill tree. So if you haven't seen that video, then um, it, it, it's a spoiler filled video because we basically go through the whole Goku's full skill tree. Um, and this may be some spoilers because I am going to talk about that. So if you don't want to kind of hear a little bit of details about that, click away now otherwise stay in the video so in that video we went over the skill tree and there were some um there were some moves and attacks that were in the skill tree that um in my opinion lead to something better dragon ball has always incorporated the stars in a sense of dragon ball if that makes sense so what i mean by that is the actual dragon balls you know the the stars that are in the dragon balls from one to seven so it's very interesting how when we look at the attacks they scale in the same regard as that as that they are you know it seems as if they are looking more um it seems more like they're looking towards the the star metric is like from one to seven so when we look at some of the attacks and uh, and things like that in the game the items they're all rated what i used to think was from one to three star because at the time the highest that i saw was a three star attack but upon looking at the uh skill tree more um it turns out that no they actually go up even higher than that to um four stars and I'm like, okay, well, if they go up to four star, what's stopping them from going up to five star? You know, what's stopping them from going up to six star? You know, stuff like that. So those things are what, oh my gosh, guys, that those things are what interests me. Those things are what kind of, in my opinion, point towards something greater. So um, I want to take a look at something really quick. So this is just it's paused from the video that i posted the other day and guys i actually paused it right on this and this is perfect for this video because exactly what i want to cover so here i have it paused on goku's limit breaker kamehameha and you can see over here well let me there we go well dragon fist it doesn't matter let's let's go back to that was on the limit breaker uh, the limit breaker Kamehameha right there. So you can see here there's one, two, three, four stars there. There's a four star there. There's a four star there and there because they tie into this four star. And then even the name of this move, which it's a three star attack, but it's his limit breaker Kamehameha. Upgraded form of the super Kamehameha. The user surpasses conventional limits for a decisive one hit super attack. And this is something, guys, that we hear in reference to super. Surpasses conventional means, surpasses conventional limits, limit breaker, limit breaker, limit breaker. You know, we didn't really hear terms like that in Dragon Ball Z. Also, 
with the star rating going up to four, it is a very real possibility that eventually we can get to the point where we have five star, six star, and even seven star items and attacks in the game. So in my opinion, with things like this, it's actually kind of hinting at, um, at, at the potential for growth. And we know this for a fact because when you look at the, uh, when you look at the DLC for the game, it, it tells you that you're going to get a new saga and, um, and I'm just looking it up, y'all. Um, you're going to get a new saga and you're also going to get two free, uh, sub quests in a sense. That's, that's basically in my opinion, what it's called. Um, the sub quest and a new, a new saga. Okay. So those things are, you, you have to ask yourself, what is that saga going to be? What is it going to be about? I mean, it's common sense to tell you that that saga is going to be about, um, something Dragon Ball super related. So, Let's go here. Let me go back because I have it pulled up now. This is on GameStop's website. It's just telling you here. This is the season pass included. And it says two original story episodes and one new story arc. Okay. That is very, very interesting. So whenever the game uses terms like original, that means that it's something completely new created for the game. And we know that because whenever we look at Banyu, they refer to her as an original character. So it, original means something made for the game. And even if it doesn't, let's just say, for example, original just means something that happened from the anime. That would mean that new arc would mean something that was created. For the game. Either, go, either way it goes, guys, there's new content coming to the game. We have a new story arc, meaning a new saga. What is it going to be? People think GT. It's not going to be GT, especially with the popularity of Super. And why would they go to GT, which takes place after Z, and skip over Super, which takes place before the last episode of Z? You get what I'm saying? Two original story episodes. Episodes can be basically subquests, or an episode can be like... Um, like whenever we fight Nappa, that's considered an episode, you know, that one mission. But it's a part of the arc, the Saiyan arc. You get what I'm saying? So even with that being the case, we'll have two new ones and they could be tied in with the new story arc. So a new story arc that comes with two original story episodes, which is really cool. Or those two original story episodes could be um, something that gives more background to Majin Buu or Ooh, more or less. So, I mean, but that's what I'm saying, guys. There's going to be a new arc. It is confirmed. And it's not an original arc. It's a new story arc. And what they mean by new is not something new made for the game. They mean new is in the sense of additional. It's coming. It's, it's something new because it's not in the base game. Okay. So that also entails that as well. Now, when we go here to Bandai Namco's Instagram page, there's some interesting stuff here. They show Frieza, and that's all well and fine. But when we read over here, they say, Encounter the Emperor of Universe 7 in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Sorry, y'all thought I had my phone on silent. When this action RPG releases January 17th, are you ready to face Frieza? Hashtag Frieza. Pre-order Dragon Ball Z Kakarot for Xbox One, PS4, and PC today. Guys, why would they make it a point to say Universe 7? That was never mentioned in Dragon Ball Z. We didn't hear about the numbers until... And you can even look here in the, in the comments. Emperor Universe 7? Super is you? See what I'm saying? I mean, I wonder how many other comments are... Um, are saying some of the same things because I mean it's right there in your face. Why would they say Universe 7 if they didn't have plans on you see what I'm saying? That groundwork is there. You have you have stuff here like Limit Breaker, Kamehameha, you have uh what we only thought was three star to go up to four star, which means that it's possible for stuff to go to five star, six star, seven star. And then you have here that we confirmed to get a new story arc. And it goes, the game, base game goes all the way to Dragon Ball Z. 
all the way to the end of Z. So what other new art can it be? This game, they already told you, follows the anime and the manga. So it's not going to be some made up story arc. It's an arc is a saga. That's basically what it is. And the original story episodes are the same. You see what I'm saying? So what else could it be? What else could it be besides potentially, more than likely, Dragon Ball Super will be coming to Dragon Ball Z <laughs> Kakarot? Because I know a lot of people are talking and saying in reference, saying like, well, maybe they'll just, you know, do Super as a um, extra game as the, the sequel or something to that effect. And no, guys, no, no, they're not going to wait two, three years to make a new game and call it Dragon Ball Super. No, they're going to incorporate Super in this game. They're going to this game needs to last two to three years. That is their their game model because they have to come out with a game every year. So you have this game coming out in 2020. I don't know if they'll do a Xenoverse 3, but they're more than likely do a Fighters 2. But even those games, they're rolling out DLC for those. You know, they're, they're, this game is not going to be a one year thing and done. You see what I'm saying? And that's the season pass. Pretty sure they're going to do another season. Pretty sure it's not going to be the only season. You get what I'm saying? So take all of that, man. It will take it with a grain of salt because this is speculation, guys. This is not confirmed. I'm just going off of the stuff that is in front of us with Frieza, Universe 7. They make it a point to say Universe 7. And then, of course, with the uh, the Limit Breaker, uh, Kamehameha, terms like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, Dragon Fist terms. You know, we, we know Dragon Fist is a movie move. But, you know, yet and still, you know, stuff like that, that's in the game, you know. Um, and then, of course, like I said, the DLC content. So let me know what y'all think down in the comment section down below. Is the groundwork laid for Dragon Ball Super to come to Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? Let me know down in the comment section down below. That's all I got for right now, y'all. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.